Would you like to know how you can inspire a relationship-minded man to pursue and experience five different types of intimacy with you and make it a no-brainer for him to decisively commit to you and only you? Well, I'm gonna show you how you can do just that on my video today. Let's get real. If you're watching this video, my guess is you're not looking for a summer fling or a weekend boyfriend. You're searching for the whole enchilada. You wanna go all the way. You want to experience something transcendent. You want to have a relationship that meets you at every human level. And because of that, I'm creating a video right now that shows you what are some of the things you need to go for and what are some of the pitfalls that may be preventing you from getting there right now. First, let's talk about intimacy. The Latin root of the word intimacy is intimus, which means innermost or deepest, which is the type of connection that we're seeking. But in our search for intimacy, there's three major roadblocks we're going to find. The first one has to do with skills. Imagine that you want to become a doctor and you go about it through not even opening a science book. Well, the likelihood of getting that is not going to happen. Now, you might be thinking, Bern, this has nothing to do with medicine. Medicine is something you have to study years and years for. This should come naturally. And that's the first bubble I'd like to burst. The type of connection you're seeking right now, where you're looking for a best friend, a lover, a spiritual companion, a sexual sensei, the whole thing is not the natural thing that's taking place in the world. And because it's not something natural, the skills that we have developed as a culture are not nearly enough for the high ambitious relationship we're seeking. The second one has to do with, we're not necessarily measuring the different types of intimacy in our day-to-day -day life. So something you can measure is hard to get momentum and traction and make progress on. So part of the reason I'm defining the different forms of intimacy is so that you understand that there's different compartments that all have a specific sequence and a specific level of virtues that you can step into to elicit the best out of a partner and to experience the most from a partner. And the third one has to do with the world we live in. If you look at dating apps, if you look at the internet, if you look at the short form of connection that we have right now, it's not necessarily the most optimum for cultivating the deepest type of communication. If anything, it's geared towards something short, something to the point, something that saves us time. So my invitation, my first invitation to you right now is if you're seeking this type of connection, you need to be very proactive. You can't afford to just wing it and experience the connection you're seeking. It's not gonna happen. Being proactive is going to work like a fine mesh. That means that you're gonna let through those men who are seeking the same type of connection you're seeking and <laughs> everything else is gonna stay in the mesh and not waste your time. You need to also elevate the quality of somebody being hungry for help, hungry for personal development, hungry for doing the work. The notion that you can connect with someone who is just compatible with you and things are gonna go great without you actually taking the time and space to consciously cultivate and learn about communication, learn about diffusing those minds that will you walk inevitably into, that you can do it without some level of conscious movement and help, I think is a little bit crazy. Since you're seeking intimacy, my goal for you today is to show you the virtues that you need to cultivate that are within your control that can elicit that from someone and also the pitfalls that I have found through connecting with thousands of women throughout my career and noticing what works, what doesn't work in different continents, different age groups, different love challenges that can prevent you from getting what you want so you don't fall for those traps. So the two virtues that will help you kick off this journey of emotional intimacy and without which none of this is possible are gonna be vulnerability and courage. With vulnerability specifically, if you're the kind of woman who wears her heart on her sleeve and she expresses so much from the beginning, I need you to scale back and do it one step at a time. Otherwise, you're risking too much and the likelihood you're gonna get hurt and fall for the wrong guy is incredibly high. If you're the kind of woman who is really reserved and not expressive and not vulnerable, then I need you to put yourself in a situation where you're 5% more expressive in your vulnerability and then step-by-step step gauge the guy you're connecting with is respectful, if he has integrity, and if he's trustworthy, so you can continue doing that. Emotional intimacy is the starting point for our journey. And I start with this because this is the grounding space for an amazing relationship. Without emotional intimacy, there is nothing that will last. And that means that you get each other, that you understand each other's model of the world, that you are emotionally compatible, that you are clear about your intentions and your ideas, that you see each other, that you feel each other, that at the end of the day, 
you can connect with someone who, despite seeing all of you, the best and the worst, still loves you. That in and of itself is an incredibly healing aspect of our relationship that matters so much when life sometimes throws you inevitable turds and you have an emotional connection with someone who gets you and understands you and despite the fact that you may make mistakes, they still see the highest version of you. That's what emotional intimacy is all about. And there's gonna be two specific virtues that allow you to get there more quickly than not. The first one has to do with emotional clarity. So many of us have very few words to describe our emotions, which means we talk about good and bad emotions or happy and sad, and that is sucking so much life out of us because there's so much nuance in what we can actually experience if we understand what's going on. I'm gonna put right now on the screen a wheel of emotions, and I'm also gonna link it up on the description if you wanna check it out more specifically. My recommendation is that you become familiar with this and that as you're experiencing emotions in life, that you develop the literacy, get the thing out, print it out and get it out, and ask yourself the question, what am I feeling right this second? Is it not just happiness and sadness? Maybe it's, maybe it's infatuation, maybe it's excitement, maybe it's hope, maybe it's pride. I want you to get more specific to what you're experiencing so that you can communicate it to the man you're with. The second aspect of creating emotional intensity has to do with being courageous enough to ask questions that led you into somebody's model of the world. If you go by what feels natural, which is sometimes a surface level conversation, and you're afraid of asking questions that might give you maybe a rejection, but might give you some depth into what the person is going through, you'll never experience the depth of relationship you're seeking. You need to consciously take the conversation to places that allow you to understand more about that person and be willing to be respectful and be willing to be hungry in, as you're going through this. The biggest pitfall I have found in men and women who are seeking emotional intimacy is falling for blinding intensity. That means that sometimes when you really feel something exciting about someone, you might confuse that infatuation with emotional intimacy and it's not the same thing. And sometimes that blinding sense of infatuation makes you think you're further along than you are and you don't get a chance to get to know each other so much. You just feel something strong for the person. If you're an intensity junkie, and you don't experience that early on, you might think that the person is not an emotional partner, an emotional compatible partner to you, and that could be nothing further from the truth. The second level of intimacy is intellectual intimacy. And I start with that as a second one because you can have a lot of intellectual intimacy with someone, but if there's no emotional connection, if there's no emotional compatibility, it's really not gonna go all the way. The two virtues that are most helpful in developing and fostering intellectual intimacy are gonna be number one, curiosity. Your capacity to be hungry, to get to know somebody's model of the world, to understand more, to have the humility to, to know that despite how smart you think you are, that person in front of you might teach you something. We live in a society right now that is more divided than any point in human history. And if you have the, as I said, the humility to ask more questions and to not assume that you know all the answers, then you'll go a lot further in being able to have intellectual compatibility and intellectual intimacy with human beings. The second one is respect. I know I shouldn't be saying this, it seems like I shouldn't be saying this, but respect is one of those things that if you disagree with someone and you don't want to convince them of anything else, you just simply want to get to understand them, that's gonna go a long way into that person being more open to continue sharing their model of the world. The biggest pitfall I have found in women who are seeking intellectual intimacy is judgment of men that don't have the degree in writing that they think is necessary for them to have that intellectual capacity. When you connect with men, I want you to rate not just where do they go to school and how far they went, but how hungry they are, if they're self-learners or not. I've connected with human beings who on their own have done much more than they would have done in the best Ivy League college, and they don't have the degree to show for it. They're intellectually hungry and curious and a great match for a woman who wants something deep. Now, before I go into spiritual, physical, and sexual intimacy, if you are a single woman watching this video, I'd love to help you understand the true reason you're still single. I've taken many years of helping women find love in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and put them together in a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that can show you, reveal to you, the number one reason you're still single despite being smart, despite being beautiful, despite having a lot to offer. And all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. 
answer a few simple questions, and in the next 60 seconds, you'll have two things. First and foremost, the answer to the question, the number one reason you're still single. And then, a report that's going to show you, based on your specific challenge, the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want much faster. Spiritual intimacy is the transcendent part of our relationship. The thing that makes you take this feeling and this emotion to the, to the next world and beyond. Multiple videos could be created about this subject alone, so I'm gonna touch on it right now to give you a small version of what I think this is about. This is about helping each other align with the most transcendent version of himself or herself. Understanding that the sum of two human beings can create a benefit and an evolution to the world around them that is exponentially higher than what each human being can do on his own or her own. This is about connecting to the part of you that's unchanging, the part of you that goes beyond this lifetime, the part of you that's connected with a higher meaning. And the two virtues that can help you get there, there's number one, is gonna be forgiveness. Why? Because uh, so much stuff is gonna happen in the context of building a relationship that if you don't have the capacity to forgive one another, it's, it's really unlikely that you'll transcend to the next step. The second one is acceptance. It's really hard to have a deep spiritual union with someone that you're trying or attempting to change. Ultimate acceptance, ultimate letting go, ultimate saying, I am here with you and sharing my heart with you as much as I can, and you're doing the same thing with me. I'm not forcing you to be different. I'm not trying to this veer you off your path. I'm here to support you on your journey and your path as best as humanly possible. And if me being in your life is not the best thing for you, as much as I love you, as much as I respect you, I'm gonna remove myself from the equation so that I'm not holding you back. That's true spiritual union and alchemy. Now the biggest pitfall I have found in human beings who are seeking, claiming that to be seeking spiritual intimacy is close-mindedness. Now, you're free to believe anything you want to believe, one God or no God or multiple gods. My experience of witnessing women seeking spiritual intimacy is that many times that is confused with one specific way of viewing of the world. My biggest ask of you would be this. If you're seeking true spiritual intimacy with someone, the more you have a lot of rules around it, including the specific religion, the specific faith, the specific thing that somebody has to, somebody has to buy into to connect with you, the more likely it is you can connect with someone who checks the boxes on paper but doesn't really feel that connection with you. If open your heart and your mind as much as you are capable of opening so that you give someone a chance irrespective of them having a slightly or very different version of what you believe in so long as the values align and the connection and the ability to help you get where you want to go is there. Next one is gonna be physical intimacy. And I start with physical intimacy before, even though sexual is part of physical, I separate it because that's the first step. Physical intimacy has to do with touch, has to do with embracing, has to do with even the energy that you feel next to someone. You don't have to touch sometimes for someone to be in that physical space of someone. And there's gonna be two qualities that enhance your capacity to understand compatibility with someone, to elicit that capacity for them to be as physically compatible with you as possible. The first one is gonna be presence, and the second one is gonna be empathy. Why presence? The more present you are, the more you can witness what that person is really like, the more you can read the room, so to speak, and understand what that person's really searching for on the physical front. The second one is empathy. When you have the capacity to not just do it for yourself, but to connect with someone and make sure that you're feeling what he's feeling, the more likely it is that he's gonna do the same back if he's an intelligent human being. The pitfall that I found that's an impediment to physical intimacy is lack of clarity. You might have very specific ways in which you like to be touched, ways in which you like someone to be next to you or hold you, but if you fall for the myth that that person should know it already, and if they don't know it already, they're not compatible with you, then you're gonna suffer. I think it requires a great degree of courage to say to someone, can you do it this way instead? Or can we try this? Or can you please do it more soft? Or can you do it I mean, anything that you need? If you have the capacity to, to first understand what's happening and then express it, you have a chance of getting what you want. It may not be compatible, but you'll never find out until you have the clarity of expressiveness of what's really fulfilling for you and what doesn't do it for you. And the last one I'm gonna go for is sexual intimacy. And I put this one last because I think this is one that if you start with the roof before the foundation, then something's off. 
and the, capa the, the potential for you to fall for a rabbit hole that's going to land you in a different land that you're not even sure where you are and not even know where it's, where it's up and where it's down is really, really high. So if you connect with sexual at the, after the first four, then you have a chance of going deeper than you would ever have gone. You have a chance for the sexual and the spiritual to combine. You have a chance for the physical and the sexual to mesh into the most beautiful way possible. The two biggest virtues you need to cultivate if you want to develop sexual intimacy with someone are going to be number one, openness. And openness, I'm talking about openness of exploration. Openness to not just say, here's exactly who I am and this is, I am who I am, but to be willing to, because you're connecting with another human being, to be at least open to hearing them out, to be open to listening to what they want, to what their fantasies are, to what their dreams are, to what the deepest part of them that's so vulnerable and so scared to share, what is that? And can you do the same thing with them? The second one is honesty. Why? Because if you're not honest about what you really want, if you're not honest about what makes you happy, what makes you feel excited, then you're really both shooting darks in the darkness, hoping they hit the target. Hand in hand with this is going to be boundaries. And boundaries means that, in, sec in sexuality means that once you're, ex especially if you're exploring something that's a little bit off from what your usual center of gravity is, that you have the capacity to say, here's exactly how far I'm willing to go and here's what I need to be able to explore this. The more you have clarity of communication, the clearer and the crispest your communication is, the more you'll be willing to explore and enjoy and get to reach a different land that you may not have even thought is possible. One of the deepest mistakes human beings make is, again, feeling that if you are going to be sexually compatible with someone, it needs to fit like a glove from the start. And that's not necessarily true. Although sometimes it happens that way, sometimes you need to get to a level of understanding and openness and expressiveness that is different than you've had in the past. And that's why the biggest pitfall is shame. And number one is the delusional thinking that it should just happen naturally. So my recommendation is if you are, have reached the level of sexual exploration, that you get as clear and as honest with yourself as possible, that not necessarily just in the act, but in times, because sometimes that moment of intimacy is so scary for both of you that it might trigger some deep shame and anxiety. So have moments of conversation before uh, you, you actually reach the level of sexual intimacy, after not necessarily doing the act, so you can express more of what you want to go for, more of your dreams, more of your hopes, more of what you think is something that's deeply yours, and see how that lands with the other person. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you like this video, click like and subscribe, and write in the comment below what's the biggest takeaway you're taking from this. Thing.